every Friday I wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Just kidding, it's 9 o'clock. Once I manage to wake up, I make some coffee. Breakfast is stop number one. Today it's chia pudding with bread. It's a rainy day today, so I cozied up on the couch and eat my breakfast in a meditative silence. Gotcha! I obviously just watched some YouTube videos. It's time for my second coffee and also some Japanese practice. I'm learning Japanese with Duolingo, but I also printed out some working sheets where I can practice my spelling and kanji. I'm going to publish another video today. I also need to tweak a few last things, title, thumbnail, description, etc. And also I want to answer a few more comments on my previous videos because lately I've been super bad at answering. I read all of them, but I just don't find the energy in me to truly take time and answer them properly. Well, I'm going to answer some today. So let's rock on, just a gentle twist to the left, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Ta-da! I am done for the day and as a part-time plant shop owner, plant YouTuber and just random person on the internet, I have a lot of plant care to do today. Since it is my day off today, I want to use this time wisely, restock my inventory, attend to all of my plants and just do all of the chores that I've been avoiding the past weeks. And honestly, I just want to have a really relaxing day of plant to-dos and I want to take you with me. Let's write the list. And ever since I started doing this, it's like magic. My brain works so much better when I have a to-do list that I can physically check off. Well, with that done, let's start with repotting some of these cuttings or all of them. I haven't really potted up much plants in the past few weeks, only like emergency repottings. So I'm kind of hyped to do it now and have so many to pot up at once. I buy in these pots in like packs of 100 pieces, so it's only 19 cents per pot, which is pretty nice. It's time to pull up the hair, much better. Now, let's start with these neon pothos cuttings. Now, I have these in this little drinking glass for way too long now. You can see by the state of the roots. So these, I definitely should have potted much, much earlier. Now, this is the untangled root situation here. As always, I will be planting four to five cuttings into one pot to make it a little bit more lush. So I'm going to prepare my little pots with some aeroid mix and then make nice little groups of plants, like so. The amount of roots on here is actually pretty nice. Number one is done. Ooh, look at this top cutting, nice. First of five pots are done, so I'm starting the counter and this is your moment to go into the comments and just guess any number of pots that I will have at the end of the video when all of the cuttings are potted up. Let's just guess, 20, 50, 100 pots and we will see at the end of the video who earns eternal honor and fame on the internet. I'm moving on with this little water propagation of Begonia Autumn Ember. This is, in my opinion, one of the fan favorites in my shop. Typically, you have to give them a lot of light to achieve this very bright red. This one has been in this little water jar for months now. And you can see we have substantial root growth from the rhizomes and also a few new leaves emerging from the base. So let's try to untangle this without destroying it, which is a little difficult because begonia roots are typically very delicate. One, two, three, four. I unfortunately don't have any cyber soil begonia mix. Oh boy, these pots look but ugly now. <laughs> For my pots for the counter and these are ugly little ducklings but believe me when i tell you these will be beautiful one day next plant 
This is just a giant jar with random cuttings in it. We have some philodendron, skindapsis, monstera, sandliana. There's also some lacquer on the bottom and it also looks kind of disgusting and overgrown. So let's check out these roots. Okay. <laughs> We got something going on here. Beautiful Monstera Stanleyana, or at least it was beautiful at a point. An assortment of Skindapsis Pictus, a huge top cutting of Philodendron Pink Princess, and I'd say that is enough roots to be potted already. Not the most aesthetic, unfortunately. Okay, let's put these guys up. Done. Let's continue with this little assortment of little propagations. There is a philodendron white princess, very well rooted by now. Then we have two baby pink princesses and the world's most sad little Hoya linearis cutting. Oh, that is hilarious actually. <laughs> Number one. For these two, I should probably take a smaller pot size. Two little cuties. To stay on the topic of philodendron pink princess, I have a full tray of propagations here. I chopped up my big philodendron pink princess and I had just a ton of little wet sticks. So I decided to put them into pond instead of perlite this time. I just wanted to try it out and it did so well. I mean, you can see how many new leaves just sprouted from this one little box where I just propped all of the little cuttings in. So I'm really curious to see how the roots look and also if we got any good variegation because with Philodendron and Pink Princess the variegation is very unstable and oftentimes at least in my experience I lost it after a while. I love perlite or pond for these kind of things because you don't have to untangle all of the roots. It's way easier to just pull out a cutting and remove or just keep all of the little pond or perlite pieces. With sphagnum, I would have to sit here for like an hour trying to untangle all of these from each other. Well, and afterwards I can wash these off and then reuse this. Good root systems on here and like two to three leaves already. Philodendrons can be so nice when they grow properly, but when they don't, they just look like shit. I don't know. And now try to plop these in. I don't know why, but philodendron roots always grow like to the sides or to the top, which is kind of weird. So they are kind of a pain in the ass to pot up sometimes. Eight little princesses for the counter. Some of them do have nice variegation, so I'm hopeful. Okay guys, let's switch up the genus a little bit. I want to put up these Hoya Pubicalix cuttings next. You saw me taking those cuttings in this video and it has been a while. This time I rooted them in water. Usually I use perlite, but I wanted to see if water does the trick as well. And I have mixed feelings. A new genus requires a new type of soil. Because I have the Hoya soil mix from Cybotanica. I don't know why I especially love the Hoya soil mix. I don't know, maybe it's the consistency or the feel. I just love it and it does wonders for all of my Hoyas. These packs are a little bit more expensive than if I were to mix my own soil, but honestly you save time, effort and space for all of the ingredients. They are specifically made for these type of plants. I don't have to fuss around, don't have to do any research. So I think it's well worth it. And if you want to try it yourself, I'll have a link in the description box and you can get 10% off by clicking it or using my code LEAFY at checkout. My verdict is water propagation on Hoya pubicalix works well if you have a leaf attached. So especially this top cutting. Mm -mm -mm. Some of the wet sticks that I put in water didn't do well. This one is straight up rotten. So if you're taking pubicalix cuttings, definitely take leaf cuttings. I'm so excited. I haven't propagated my Hoya pubicalix in a while. Just look at these roots. Spaghetti them in and secure with some soil. 
those little wet sticks. I'm going to try and stick these in and just see if anything comes out of it. Four more pots. Moving on to this jar of plant cuttings. I have a few Anthurium Arisemoides cuttings and some Monstera Alensoniae. I think that's it. These two cuttings don't seem to be very fast propagators somehow. Maybe I should try in moss. And don't worry, I'm decked out with some Cybotonica sphagnum moss. I didn't know sphagnum moss could be this good. It just has those very long, beautiful fibers. And on top of that, it is sourced in the Netherlands and not like somewhere in New Zealand. Now back to the Monstera Alansonii cuttings. These, on the other hand, have gorgeous, gorgeous roots because these root like a charm. I never had an issue with Monstera Alansonii rooting or propagating well. Just look at this beast of a root. I almost consider Monstera Alansonii to be a little too invasive almost. It grows really well, so I constantly have to cut it back. And sometimes I wish I had less Adansonii cuttings, if you know what I mean. And I wish sometimes I could just throw away cuttings of it, but I can't, I don't know. I just, I can't. I think I'm going to put like four plants into one pot just to make it more bushy and, you know, get rid of them. <laughs> I don't know why I always procrastinate on that, but every time I do end up finally potting up all of these different kind of plants. It's just nice, you know? It's almost the same feeling as decluttering my collection. I guess because I just declutter my mind because I can cross off stuff from my to-do list. I got three more pots for the counter and since I can't really contribute this much today except for vibes and beautiful plants, I want to know from you, what are your favorite plant YouTubers or plant channels? Just let me know because obviously I know the big names, but maybe you know some more underrated plant channels, some smaller plant channels that you really enjoy. So please let me know. I would love to check them out and find new inspiration maybe because lately I have been a little uninspired, not gonna lie. Since we are on the topic of plant YouTubers, Maybe I can share which ones I like to watch. So I started my plant journey in 2018. Back then there were significantly less channels, that's for sure. But I started with just watching random videos about random plants that I was struggling with at the time. It kind of hooked me on plant YouTube. And back then I was watching a lot of Harley G, I think was one of the first plant tubers that I really, really enjoyed watching. She was always so free and fun in her videos. And also at the time, I think Plantarina was really big. And I really loved how her whole house was just full with plants. Looking back at it now, Plantarina had some questionable advice at times, but overall I just enjoyed the design of plants and decorating with plants and how she arranged them in her home and outside. It just looked nice and it just was a lot of plants. Oh, Kaylee Allen, which was nice because she was the only European plant tuber at the time, at least that I knew of. By now there's even more really good plant tubers like Benji plant, for example. I think he is the plant tuber with the best aesthetic eye. He has really nice plant pot pairings. Also, he's really good at mounting plants in a really aesthetic way. Then later on, I started watching James Armstrong, I think. He always had the newest, most hype rare plants. I don't know what his connection was or where he got them but he always had them first. So this was a really good place to get inspired how to lose as much money as possible, as fast as possible. <laughs> Six more pots. 
I also watched some crazy plant guy and probably some more that I'm just forgetting now. I feel like right now there's this new wave of plant tubers and content creators that started around the pandemic, obviously, which was a big rise for the topic of houseplants. And I would love to know some of your favorite channels. So please, please, please let me know down below. I think it's time to cross off the first few things on the list because we have done quite a lot already. Put it on the cuttings. Yes. We did this. Well, that's two things that we've done. In this propagation box, I have more propagations. I know, crazy, right? So we have some Anthurium seedlings and a Alocasia zebrina baby. I'm pleased because my other ones died. And something even more exciting. Do you remember this little tray? This little perlite prop box did so freaking well. I'm really, really pleased with it. All of these Gandapsas have a nice little leaf. The Sibi blue cuttings all got a leaf as well. And even the Begonia amphioxus, at least one of the propagations that I stuck in, grew into a new plant. Lastly, I have my Anthurium pallidiflorum seedlings. I should probably pot them up into some soil and see if they would grow faster in there. With perlite, it's so freaking easy. You just take it out, shake it a little bit to get the excess perlite off, leave the rest on there and you're done. Boom. With this little box, it will be pretty much the same. Tuck on the cuttings and just take it out in one piece. A neat little cutting. Some skin depths with a little root. Oh yeah, poopy calyx with a long root and the little amphioxus. And this perlite I can reuse now. First, I need to pot up these because it's quite a lot and then I can do the seedlings. I'm telling you guys, just do your chores. In a clap of a hand, you can do all of your tasks at once. It's like magic. Like editing magic. I'm very much unsure how I can get these out and how the roots look. Okay, so these roots are still super small. I don't know, I think I should probably wait a little while longer. <laughs> at least I can cross this off really fast. Sabrina pot and the rim seedlings. Well, at least it's crossed. This begonia is currently in a terracotta pot and I tried it. It looks kind of nice, but I don't think terracotta is the right choice for begonias with my watering style. This little lady here is a Monstera Deliciosa. My boyfriend brought this from the office and it had really terrible root rot, so I decided to propagate it, chop everything off and voila, we've got some really nice beautiful roots. We lost a lot of leaves unfortunately. These propagate really well in water like every time. Just look at this healthy beautiful root system. This is enough roots to pot this baby up. I think this is going to be okay. I do want to use up my self-made mix here. Pop in the plant carefully. I think we're done. Now moving on to the begonia, let's check out the situation here. The soil is so dry, it just dries out very, very quickly due to the terracotta. I don't know what I was thinking with this pairing. And I also want to give her a little bit more space. Plop it in here. Oh yeah, this looks much better already. And this is my new and improved Begonia Tamaya. So I really hope she is going to like her new, more moisture retaining confinement. And with this, I can cross off two more things from my list. Let's water these babes a little bit. And also the small pots. We still need to count all of them. So we have 
two, six, 12, 21 little pots here. So 23 and then these are 31 pots. So 54 pots, if I'm not mistaken. Huh, now I'm thinking I probably should have guessed a number earlier, <laughs> which I totally forgot. I hope some of you got it right or at least got close. So I will check the comments for that. Thank you for keeping me company today. I hope it was as relaxing for you as it was for me to just chill and chat a little bit. I will see you for the next part of plant chores since obviously I didn't get everything from my list done as always. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye.